Our next uh, bill is House File 699. Representative Mueller, would you like to move your bill? Madam Chair, I would like to move uh, House File 699 in front of this committee, please. And it will be laid over for possible inclusion um, to your bill. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. So uh, as uh, I, many of you know, I've been a teacher for um, many years, almost two decades. And one thing that as I've seen education change and go um, and change all these different things, one thing that I have seen remain the same is that when a teacher um, is gone, there needs to be a person in the classroom because of the fact that you know, we don't deal with robots, we deal with, with people. And um, as I have continued on in my journey of education, what has became uh, maybe a, a, a very infrequent annoyance has become a common reality for many teachers. There are not enough substitutes. And what we're asking uh, teachers to do is to cover their uh, classes, for their colleague classes during, um, during their prep times. Now, when we ask a teacher to cover during preparation time, not only does that time get to be uh, taken away for them for planning, but also there is time that students come in to get some individualist help. And so it is really a detriment both to teacher and to student when we do not have enough substitute teachers. In the past, it um, was uh, important for uh, teachers to have a substitute teacher that was licensed in a content area because oftentimes they would try to match that substitute teacher with the teacher that was out so that lessons could continue. In reality, most of the time, especially for someone like me who taught English, I often made it a reading day for my students or I would have something where I, if I knew, where if I didn't know if I was going to have a, a licensed content teacher, I would have something so that my students could still function without not needing to have a lot of content. In the current time that we are teaching in, this has become almost completely obsolete. When we are, uh, have so many things that are accessible to our students online in school, and so many uh, schools that have one-to-one -one laptop or tablet devices with um, enhanced broadband or um, Wi-Fi access, there are so many options for our teachers to create and uh, create lessons, provide lessons, provide activities for their students without really missing a beat. With that being said, it's important for us to be able to have a, a, a person in the classroom to make sure that students are still working and to have relationships with them. House File 699 allows a school district the flexibility to hire a, um, a substitute teacher pending a completed background check, as long as they uh, uh, meet the requirements for the professional standards under tier one CTE teachers. Having five years of experience in a field, having a two year degree, or having a professional certification. This will allow school districts to have a direct access to, to community members to come in who are maybe in a different phase of life or are looking for just a little extra income so that they can come in and um, see what's going on in the classroom and be that stable person if there's questions and to create relationships. I have uh, an endorsement from MSB, MSBA and also in your digital packets, you also should see um, a support letter from my local, um, my local union, my Austin union, you should see there's a, a letter from uh, the president of my local union, Austin, Minnesota. I have several testifiers. Uh, well, I have a testifier or maybe maybe more than one <laughs> uh, here today. Um, I do have uh, Mr. Mark Raymond, who is our uh, human resources uh, specialist director at Austin High School, who actually came up with the idea for this bill. And then we should also have the superintendent of District 622, which will also be testifying. Uh, so at this point, um, Madam Chair, I would like to turn it over to my testifiers. Thank you, Rep. Mueller. Um, Mr. Raymond, welcome to the committee. And would you introduce yourself for the record and proceed with your testimony? Thank you, Chair Hassan. Uh, 
My name is Mark Raymond. I'm the Executive Director of Human Resources for Austin Public Schools. About two years ago, myself and our uh, Education Minnesota Union President, Tom Compton, um, came up with an idea of writing this bill in order to provide us with some relief and also to bring the statutory requirements for substitute teaching into the present day. The statutory requirements for substitute teaching were written at a time when college graduates were the, the institution by which the schools were, were framing themselves. They were the, the holder of all the information. So what we were looking for at that time out of our substitute teachers was a vessel of information, somebody that had additional training that, that would actually be resident to all of the information. Today, what we're finding is that our instructors are doing such an amazing job at preparing for class and having resources available for their students, both during the class period, that 50 minutes of captive time that they're in the building, and also providing those resources so that it's available when the students are outside of the student day, so that their students are able to capture some of that information on their own after school, after they work, and all of those opportunities for students, that what we're finding is that the job of substitute teacher can be effectively divided in half. And the two halves are content and physical presence. Right now, what's happening is that the content instructor is not often absent. So an instructor that can't be physically present in a classroom due to illness or absence, more often than not is still present in that classroom via technology in the terms of content. Their content is still being presented through alternative methods. What's missing is that physical presence to be there with the kids to make sure that resources are available and to build relationships with our kids so that questions are answered and anything that comes up during the course of the day, they have that resource of an adult figure. With the current legislation, you have to have a four-year college degree and that four-year college degree does not prepare you necessarily to be a tremendous relationship building person from your community. Also, there are very few four-year college degree people that are currently unemployed willing to come into the school system to substitute. But I can tell you that in Austin, Minnesota with a 50% minority population, I have excluded an entire population of people that are wonderfully qualified, speak multiple languages, build great relationships and represent our community extremely well but because they don't have a four-year college degree, we're closing the door on them and their opportunity to actually be a part of the educational process. What we're suggesting is that school districts are uniquely qualified to judge people on their merits, their abilities and their passions, to offer training of appropriate level for this idea of substitute teaching, to divide it out based upon age groups so that the training given for people interested in elementary substitution is not identical to the training given to those at secondary so that we can fulfill this need of a physical presence in the room that represents our community that also builds relationship with our students. And with that, I'll yield to anyone with questions. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Uh, Representative Mueller, is there, are there other people who are on the call that are testifying. I have a couple testifiers listed, but I don't see. Oh, uh, Madam Chair, or... I was told I was told that um, Superintendent from uh, District 622 was coming, but maybe last minute they were not able to come, and that's Madam, why we have the school board association letter. Madam, Madam Chair, uh, this is Christine Osorio, Superintendent. Oh, yay! Good. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself and to your testimony. Thank you, Chair Hassan. Uh, my name is Christine Tucci Osorio, and I'm the superintendent for School District 622, which is North St. Paul, Maplewood, and Oakdale, and multiple parts of additional communities. Um, I'm really pleased to be here to speak on behalf of our AMSD school districts. Uh, it was great to hear that this originated in Austin. It goes to show how our, our issues are very similar across the state. Um, and I'm really here to speak on in favor of House File 699. Um, what I'd like to do is just really quickly, and you heard a little bit about this from um, Representative Mueller, and thank you, Representative Mueller, for carrying this file. It's really important for us. First of all, I'd like to just re reiterate, how do we manage when we have 
teacher absences without a substitute in place. Um, we have we handle it a couple of different ways in our elementary programs. Typically what happens, let's say there's a third grade teacher who's out absent and there's not a substitute to fill their place. We will sometimes take that class and divide that class up and give half that class to a different teacher and half the class to another teacher. Sometimes there aren't enough at the same grade level where those kids have to go to a different grade level to be with a different class of teach, uh, classroom. So the classroom that's affected is not just the one that's missing the teacher that day, but also the other class where teachers having to sort of juggle what they were going to do for the day and switch it up and, and not be able to meet all the individual needs of students in the same regard. In our secondary programs, typically what happens is, uh, as we heard earlier, when a teacher is gone, if you think about a six period day in a school, a middle school or a high school, what will happen is every single hour of the day, a different teacher will be plugged in to be the fill in that hour of the day, missing their own preparation time for that day. So it's pretty chaotic. It does affect more than just the class that didn't have a teacher that day. So what does this look like in my school district? So I went back, not this current school year because of the pandemic, I actually went back to the 1819 school year, which was our last entire school year we were in, in a normal setting. And we had, of all the teacher absences I had, 12.9% of those went unfilled, meaning there was not a substitute who picked up the job, okay? So a teacher's out sick for a day, those are the numbers. In, that, in my district, that equated to 511 days that there was a classroom without a teacher in the school district. Um, and so this really is a huge issue for us. And I think as you've heard already, there is a shortage of substitute teachers. And how will this uh, bill help? Well, in a number of ways, you already heard a little bit about some of the reasons why our teachers are able to communicate content and lead that area. But there's a huge element in this that personally catches my attention. We have many paraprofessionals, for example, in our schools who maybe don't have the four-year degree. Um, and we have others who work in our schools who don't have a four-year degree, but they already know the students. I have many, many paraprofessionals. I have some that do have the four-year degree and they, we do have short call sub licenses for them. But there are so many more that could help us out in those situations. And we can't use them in that regard because they don't have that degree completed. And so what would be really important for us is the ability to be able to put people in front of our students, people who already know those students, people who already know what the classroom rituals and routines are because they're in those classes with the students supporting in that regard. So for me, this was a really big aha of a way we would be thrilled to be able to use this added flexibility to engage more of our people who work in our district who already have um, content, the connections to the classroom. They maybe aren't trained in the content area, but they have familiarity with rituals and routines in those classrooms. So paraprofessionals, it could be a, a coach who already works with the students in some other regards, other folks who know the kids in the school system. And that would mean a whole lot of continuity for our learners. So with that, I thank you for the opportunity and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Is there anyone else who is in, in the call that would like to speak for or against the bill? Anyone else? All right, we will move to uh, member discussion. Representative Mueller. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Representative Mueller for bringing this bill. This is clearly um, a, a very important issue. Um, I just had a question about the background check requirement because I noted that you said um, when you were introducing the bill that they would have a completed background check beforehand. and. When I look at the bill, it cross-references to uh, 123B03. And to me, that statute just says the background check has to be requested of the BCA, but not necessarily completed. And so I just wanna be sure that those background checks are done um, before the substitute teacher comes in and maybe it's in a different area of law or something that I'm not familiar with. So if you could answer that question, that would be great. Thank you, Representative Mueller. Representative Mueller. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Representative Muller. I really appreciate the question. It is my intention when writing this bill that uh, um, I do know that, you know, uh, when I look at, as a, as a teacher myself, I can't be in a classroom without, without a background check being successfully completed. It was never my intention for a stu uh, any substitute teacher to be hired without a completed background check. So um, if the language would be unclear. I guess I would kind of defer this question to our uh, nonpartisan researchers just to make sure that the language is clear. Uh, 
Christina um, or Tim? Will you be able to? Yeah. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members. Um, 123B03 does require that, that the background check be performed on all employees. Um, uh, I believe, I'm sorry, the statutes, I know there have been a few proposals over the years. Sometimes it was, um, uh, there was at one point a proposal to change it so that it, a, a staff couldn't be, um, I'm sorry, normally teacher licenses are also uh, get background checks. I'd have to just double check the language on this one, but generally it doesn't take very long for those background checks to be completed. So um, if, if somebody had, the district could certainly do it before, um, if they had enough time, enough notice, they could certainly do the background check beforehand. Thank you. Professor Muller. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Representative Mueller and Ms. Para for that. I, if we can just work on the language just to make sure that those are completed um, before they, they enter, I think that would be, um, would be great. And I'd be happy to, to work with you on that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Representative Erickson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my question is for Mr. Raymond. So Mr. Raymond, okay. thank you very much for being here. And for the work that you do in the Austin School District, I can tell you, you had a very good basketball team two years ago because they beat my Princeton Tigers. And it was just a fantastic game. And I was really very proud of the Tigers, but even prouder of your Austin players. I mean, what great gentlemen they were and what great talent on the, on the basketball floor. But my question has to do with, you probably would wanna change your marketing for substitute teachers if this three-year pilot becomes law because it seems to me it would be an advantage for you to get out to the public the fact that you welcome these folks, but they're gonna need background checks and that might take a little while. Now, when I subbed after retiring uh, almost four decades, uh, I actually went to my school districts for all the training that they had for substitute teachers because I indicated an interest that even though I have a life license and it's in, um, uh, uh, 8, 8, 12 language arts that I would be interested in subbing at this at this the elementary level. I, I welcomed an opportunity like that. So that was a special training from the secondary, which I really didn't have to go to so thoroughly. But you know, what would you say about marketing and the fact that um, this might also be a great uh, marketing tool for getting uh, so many in your community? and I think across the state into the teaching profession. Uh, so would you comment on th those two questions I've asked? Thank you. Mr. Raymond. Thank you, Representative Erickson. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, the training that we would offer would be in combination with our uh, local union. We design it together. We would look to try and uh, divide this out based upon age appropriate. And for Austin, we have a kindergarten center. All kindergartners are in one building. We would do that training separate. We would then do our training K-4 as a training. We would do our middle levels, five to eight would be one training. And then high school, nine, 12 would be the last training. And anybody wishing to, turn, to uh, sub in any of those age groups would have to complete each of the trainings. Our goal would be to have the best possibly prepared people in front of our kids as we can. As far as the opportunities this could additionally provide, um, right now the state of Minnesota has several programs that they're referring to as Grow Your Own. The Grow Your Own Future Program's design is to take somebody that's in a paraprofessional role and move them in a greater capacity to becoming a teacher. The unfortunate reality with the Grow Your Own programs when they start pulling out of the para ranks is that when we hire a para, that position usually requires somebody to be in the school district for six to seven hours a day, five days a week, which really limits their ability to participate in a teacher preparation program because they just don't have the time during the day to do both. Now, in the metro area, you might be able to find some online programs that you could do this with. I know in Outstate, in Austin specifically, we have an outstanding partnership with Winona State University, where at the local community college, you can actually pick up a four-year elementary degree with Winona State University in combination with Riverland 
uh, community college. It's a tremendous program. If, if I could provide opportunities for those students to do substitute teaching on an at will basis to be able to fill in their schedules, they would not only be able to get that experience that they so desperately need to come into schools to have an understanding of what age groups they want to work with, but it would also be able to fund themselves as they work their way through the programs. Several of the WSU programs will only meet three days a week or four days a week, providing two or one day a week that they could be fully engaged as a substitute. And on some of those other days, depending on the semester and the schedule, they could do half days, half day mornings or half day afternoons. Those opportunities are not provided to us by the Grow Your Own programs that have been passed for Paras in Outstate. Maybe it happens in some other programs, but at, in Outstate Minnesota right now, with the Grow Your Own programs, we're, we're having difficulty moving those Paras into fully licensed teaching positions. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Um, moving on to uh, Representative Wasselwick. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, and thank you, Representative Mueller. I know. Substitutes are difficult to find. I know that's an issue that I've heard from my suburban district as well. Just had a couple of questions for you. Um, I know the bill language um, says something about 15 consecutive days. Is that within a certain time period or is that just 15 consecutive days? And then if there was space between that, they could come back for that 15 days again, I guess. I, I'm just wondering if you could clarify that for me. Representative Mueller. Thank you, Chair Hassan and uh, Representative Wazalek. Um, this is how we classify substitutes. A short call sub is basically anyone who is underneath the 15 consecutive days. After that, um, and I might defer to uh, Mr. Raymond, but after that, then you would have to get a licensed teacher. And so I don't think, and I, I think, as I said, I think I'm going to refer to Mr. Raymond to make sure that I'm answering that correctly. Mr. Raymond? This question has been clarified through Pelsby for a number of years. The issue here is, is whether or not school districts would play games, quote unquote, with that idea of a 15 day licensure where you just say, simply try to cycle a, a teacher out and then bring them back in and, and essentially turn a full time position into a part time position by dividing it up. That is not the intent of the legislation. That is not the intent of the current uh, statutory language that uh, short term substitute teachers fall under. What is supposed to happen is it's a maximum in any one assignment of 15 days for any length of time. So the example would be is if there was going to be a 20 day absence for a second grade teacher, we would look for a long term sub. If the absence was 10 days, I could use a short call sub. I could bring that person in. If at some other point during the year, there is a separate incident for that same instructor, they're not related, I could bring that same instructor back in. We are not allowed to bring people in and just roll them out for one day and bring them back in. That is outside the intent of current legislation um, with our short call uh, licensed subs. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Uh, just, Wick, do you have a follow up? Yeah, um, thank you for that clarification. That was sort of what I was concerned about was having somebody just kind of rolling along and not really following the, the intent of the law. So I appreciate that. The other question I had was, um, again, my understanding that this, this position um, and I don't know what the current language is for short call subs, but doesn't require the same level of background check. So it's federal versus state. Um, so I'm wondering, Representative Mueller, or maybe there's someone else on the call, or maybe this is a follow-up question. If, if someone could just clarify what sort of differences are there with, with the state versus the federal. I know it's sort of more in depth, but I don't know if there's someone who can speak to sort of the differences of, of if there are things that might be missed if with the state background check versus the federal background check. Representative Mueller. I was always uh, got my background check as a full teacher, and so I will definitely defer to uh, Mr. Raymond or House to Superintendent Six Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> Christina so this, or or Mr. Raymond. Mr. Raymond, do you have an answer to that? So, if this licensure were to go through with uh, the same direction as most other professional licensing through Pelsby, it would be held to the same standard that our current substitute teachers are are falling underneath with their background check. And I believe Pelsby is doing both federal and state level background checks. Um, it's the federal level of sex crimes databases that they're running them through. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Christina, do you have something to add or? Uh, Madam Chair, nothing really to add specific to that other than for the most part, the 15 days is the same as the original uh, state statute right now. Background check is intended to be the original. What's changing is the flexibility to broaden it to uh, more eligible people who maybe don't have that four-year degree completed. 
Thank you. Um, Representative Keeler, to your question. I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Representative Mueller, for bringing this. I actually used to be a substitute coordinator in my district, and I like every morning it was a scramble of math to try to figure out basically which classes were priorities, and we would sit at like a 60 to 70 percent um, fill rate, which means 30 percent of our classes were not having teachers. And so you're right; you're pulling people from their prep class or their prep time to fill a class, it's not conducive for our children. Um, I just, can you just clarify for me? So we are moving the liability. So instead of going through Pelsby to do the short call license, are we moving liability back on the school districts for them to do licensing? Tell me what's different. I guess to me, it looks like what we already have in place for our short call um, substitute teachers. Just tell me what the, diff the actual difference is. Representative Mueller. Well, uh, thank you, Chair Hassan and Representative Keeler. And I too was a substitute coordinator at one point in time and understand your pain completely. <laughs> um, I can answer the first part or the, the second part of your question. Liability, I'm gonna defer to one of my experts. But um, currently from what I understand, you need to have a four year degree in order to be a substitute teacher. And unless it's a CTE teacher, then you can have those other requirements. But for everything else, you do have to have a four-year degree. And as we heard from both of our testifiers, people who have four-year degrees are not often what willing to just maybe have a job that day. And so they often are, are um, hired at other, at other places as a more permanent basis. As for the liability, one of my testifiers can answer that. Thank you, Representative Mueller. Who will take this? I'd be happy to take it. Um, my understanding of the way that the legislation is moving forward, our goal would be to essentially take the short call license that currently exists under Pelsby and essentially open up the eligibility from those individuals that have a four year college degree and open it up to a wider scope of people so that there's a greater number of people that could engage in the educational process in the same way. They would apply for their licensure, go through the same background checks as our current substitute teachers that are applying for a 15-day short call license. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Madam Chair. Yes. Okay, so really then what we're doing is we're making a change from our two-year degrees to be in CTE, um, to be in our CTE field to be any two-year degree is eligible for a short call license. And five years worth uh, of Mr. Uh, professional experience. So, Keeler, do you have a follow-up or? Um, no, Representative Mueller, if maybe you and I can talk offline about it a little bit more. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Um, for clarity purposes, I want to um, you know, clarify that this bill is being laid over for a future consideration. consideration. And um, Representative Mueller, do you have last words on this. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I just want to really thank my testifiers for coming. They shared some really powerful stories about um, the struggles that are happening in, in their district. And I'd like to say, you know, I graduated from District 622, class of 99 at Tartan High School. Thank you very much. And, um, and I'm, and then, you know, before I became a legislator, I was working at Austin. And so um, I, def I know uh, Mr. Raymond very well and his passion and his knowledge. Um, and really am appreciative of them coming in support of this. Um, I know that it I know that there may be some language issues to work out, but I really think that this, this solution of more local control, more flexibility for these schools are really going to be helpful. Plus it's also going to allow people from their community to come in and um, again, whether that's just to be a short call sub or whether that sparks an interest for them to go back to school and, and to uh, become a teacher, all of that is a win for our districts. And so I think that's really, really important for us. Um, we heard testimony uh, in the Senate um, from the Anoka Hennepin uh, superintendent who said, and this was back in February uh, in the Senate, that in March alone, he had at that point 100 positions that were unfilled for a substitute teacher. The need is dire. And so we really need to be able to um, 
uh, to make move on this bill so that we're able to um, accommodate our school districts. And um, with that, uh, Chair Hassan, I, I did have a quick question if it's okay. Um, it yes. was my understanding that we had already heard an omnibus bill from policy. And so I guess I didn't understand how this could be laid over. Any questions or any questions? It's, I'm, a, I'm a, a first termer, so I'm just making sure. Yes, um, Professor Mueller, um, it's my understanding the bill just got a full hearing today and it's being laid over uh, for future consideration. And um, that's my understanding. That's what I got. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Professor Mueller. Um, and House File 699 is laid over.